you allow me to share here, thank you very much. This is the add to the knowledge and it's important, we shared it with the doctors yesterday and I shared it with the others for past few years, but it is important to come to a full understanding. Um, if you go back to book number one and book number two, this has been explained. If you go into the patterns, it's written in the patterns, especially the medical application pattern. If you go into the teaching of past few weeks, past few months and years, we always, we spoke with about a CO2. I'm going to change the color that you can see easier. We spoke about a CO2. And the CO2, how CO2 affects the viruses. What we have seen is that in the clinical test, in every other things we do, we have the, let's say Ebola or HIV as a virus. As we explained in other teaching, this, with these viruses, you have the amino acid and you have a backpack energy, which we call it the viruses. Depending on its strength, we have given them different names. But in fact, what is important is that this amino acid inside, which is your NOH, Mr. Kohan, is always the same. We saw how, because of the dynamic shape of the plasma, in interaction with this material, we have managed to change its strength, and in a way we see the end, how it works, and how it has interacted. We seen, that's why the um, ganses are very effective in respect to viruses. One of the points which has been a stumbling block and we had to look into to explain and it's been explained in many of the teaching is that what do we do with problems, microbes, germs, parasites which are amino acid based? Let me just, I have to stop this. The amino acid based entities do not have extra energy. The amino acid based entities have and partially can be affected by the uh, CO2 but not all of it. When we cultured uh, bacteria and microbes and things like this in the laboratory, we see um, partially, but not fully effective. Go back into the teaching. Here with CO2, the viruses have changed the strength. With amino acid based, we have to find a new solution. We cannot touch the carbon, because it just changes the line of communication. We cannot change the oxygen, because it's the holding. It can increase the strength of the field of the plasma, or reduce the plasma of the amino acid. Hydrogen is a link for transferring or deciding on a full size dimension and transfer of energy in and out. Nitrogen is the decider of how much this plasma will dictate in its transfer of energy in its concise. So, we cannot touch the O and C at the moment. In a future teaching, I'll show you the effectiveness of how you can work with these. But, what we see, we can change the nitrogen. Those of you who work around trying to sort out something for bacteria, for microbes, for parasites, you have to bring your attention into production of nitrogen. You can do two ways. 
you can use nitrites to create nitrogen oxide or to create a energy that you can interact with nitrogen that you can handle microbes, parasites and bacteria. Because these are earthly dependent, so you have to have dictates the condition of the earth which dictates their size and the position. When you produce the different amino acids with copper or zinc, you saw how different shape and color and orientation and thickness of the amino acid on top of the box, on top of the water. So this should have given you an indication. Something is dictating the size of the, and the shape of the amino acid. And that is the nitrogen. The strength of the nitrogen, which that environment creates and attracts. So, if you are going into the next step of the health application or germs or bacteria, you have to consider the introduction of the nitrogen into the process. But when you introduce nitrogen in a scientific way, you have to understand what it affects, what it works and how you're affecting it. The work of the nitrogen comes in, not in a matter state, but in a Gans state, but when the nitrogen is in the Gans state, it's in a plasmatic vacuum condition of the body of the man, it works on the transfer of energy which it gives to the hydrogen, and if you look at it, we always said the hydrogen is at the end. So the energy received by the release or interaction of the nitrogen dictates the position and the strength of the absorption and reduction of the fields at the end of the plasma, which is, is what we call Coulomb's barrier or plasmatic barrier. So, what you need to uh, take a step further is the change of nitrogen dictates the structure of the amino acid. So, if you change the strength of this, or affect the operation of this, you can handle anything which is amino acid, acid based. So, if you understand this, you can go in changing all the bacteria. People who had a problem with solving malaria should understand this. One of the best ways to handle, to create the material to handle nitrogen, is get collaboration from another material which is connected to the um, behavior of nitrogen. One of these materials is silver nitride, because already has a position and condition, and nitrogen responds to silver nitride in its atomic decay structure. I have taught this yesterday in the medical application. We don't have much time, I try to condense it and we go on it next time. The reason for it and the operation of it, next teaching, I'll go into it in depth. But for the time being, till next week, I would like to explain to you how this works and how it's effective. Those of you who handle parasites, those of you who handle microbes and bacteria, you have to look into existence of nitrogen and the centralization of it. It's in the book one. Hello, Mr. Kesh. Hello. We lost his connection, we... but he's still on the list of uh, panelists. Yeah, and it's still showing that. Oops, uh -huh. it, it was a drop out there. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello again. I'm back again. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just I stopped. A I stopped when you fell out. When I fell out, I stopped. I could see it. So yeah. what what we see is that we need to add to the knowledge that all of us understand the work of the bacteria and microbes and parasites. This is why some of you have a success with parasites, with malaria, and some of you don't, some of you have problem with the infection, some of you don't. It depends on what strength you used and you chose to interact with the nitrogen. 
uh, on next week's teaching, we'll go in depth in this, because that's a new opening in the Board of Science of Medicine and the operation of the body. You need to know it for deep space, because without it, you will have a huge problem to sustain the body of the man in the space and in his own total integrity. So, those of you who are working on that side, look into the nitrogen nitroxide, look at the mm, silver nitride, and then I show you the full structure, why and how silver has been one of the main, what we call, uh, materials which has been used for centuries by people, because now you understand the scientific purpose, the, uh, what do you call it, the knowledge behind it, and how it operates and how it connects to the body of the man.